presentation that's going to give us a little bit of framing and context for the discussions we're going to have over the course of today in the next session. So in this presentation you're going to learn a little bit more about the role of the authority, transport powers and plans, and get a bit of an insight into how bus services work. So, in the um, Integrated Transport Operations team. Um, I have worked in local government for over 20 years now and I've worked at Bristol, at North East Somerset, back to Bristol and, and now here for the last um, four years. So, just give you a bit of background. This is us, the West of England Combined Authority. This is the area that we are responsible for. Um, as you probably know, um, it covers the cities of Bristol, which is the most popular city in South West of England, and also Bath. Um, however, three quarters of the West of England area are rural by nature. Although there are no really remote rural areas that are more than 10 miles from a major city or town, um, the rural areas do suffer with the same problems as uh, more isolated rural areas in the UK such as access to poor housing um, and employment opportunities and services and there's been a decline in rural bus services and a lack, a lack of affordable housing. Um, Bath and North Somerset is predominantly a rural area and covers um, about 135 square miles with a population of um, just under um, 200,000 residents and half of those do live within the city of Bath. The rest of the population is concentrated around the towns of Cainsham, um, Midsum and Norton, Bradstock and Chew Valley. The city of Bristol, which we are in at the moment, um, is obviously a predominantly urban area. It's 42 square miles and has a population of just under 500,000 people within the community boundary. Um, South Gloucestershire, um, again, is predominantly rural and it covers an area of 207 square miles with a population of just under 300,000 residents and 60% of South Gloucestershire's um, population live in the urban areas immediately adjoining the city of Bristol. And boundaries such as in Down End, Filton and Kingswood. 18% of residents live in the towns of Yatech and Sovereign Thornbury, and the remainder of the 20% of residents live in the more rural areas of South Cross. So, buses in the west of England. Um, in your day to day lives, you probably see lots of buses when you're out and about, um, many different colours and sizes. Most of them are operated by first. Um, I don't know if anybody knows any, any other bus operators that they see out and about. Stagecoach. Stagecoach, yeah. Any more? Libra Travel. Yeah. <laughs> lemon buses. Yeah, big lemon. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much all of them. Yeah, we've got a few more. We've got a bus as well. Um, so, and that's another one sort of which is mainly based in the Bristol area. Um, you cannot tell really by looking at them. But most of them make a profit, as I said, and are operated by first. But some of them are subsidised um, by, by me and you in the room. So did you say some make a profit and some are subsidised? Yeah. So, so buses are, um, they are complicated funding jigsaw, but they're also a great community asset. I'll just go into a bit of the, the background to um, how we are we find ourselves in the position we're in now. So back in 1985, um, the Transport Act deregulated the bus industry. And deregulation is when government power is removed or reduced um, to create more competition within industry and it, to drive efficiencies and generate profit. Um, probably more familiar to you is some sort of like the changes in British Gas and Royal Mail. Um, which are obviously no longer state owned and royal. There's lots of people who deliver parcels and letters now, whereas originally it was only Royal Mail. Um, so, like that example, there are lots of bus operators nationwide. So, we've got Arriva, we've got First, Go Ahead, National Express, and Stagecoach, which are the, the big ones within our country. 
Um, so private companies, as part of the deregulation of the bus industry, they can run services along routes to destinations, to, to anywhere really, but really they, they concentrate on areas which um, they run services to areas of high employment, um, where there are shopping and leisure opportunities, as these routes have the most chance of taking lots of people where they want to go, and therefore they're generating the most money for, for the operator. So in the West of England area, first has the largest share of bus market. And although um, I know there's, you know, they, they do, do get quite a bad press at times, and there's a lot of sometimes anti-first um, feeling, but working with first officers, and we do have a really, really good relationship with them. And you know we do work together for um, to see what we can do to improve the, the bus network. So the difference between um, what is a commercial, so a, a private um, company running buses and supported services, which the, the combined authority um, buys. So where it isn't viable. For a bus operator to provide a commercial bus service, so it's, it's not going to make them enough money, then um, we, as um, the combined authority, we can step in with and um, buy services that we deem are socially necessary. But we cannot keep compete with any services that are run by a commercial company, which means we can't take money away from them. We can, you know, we can make a profit. We're just providing something, you know, that is is socially necessary, and that's what we we call supported bus services. And it's those buses that you're here to, to talk about today. So the the table here that summarises the difference between um, commercial and supported services. So um, first one is they're operated by commercial companies. Um, and supported services, they're services that we go out to the market and we ask companies to submit a price to us for a period of time to, to run the service that we feel is, is socially necessary. So in commercial services, routes, the times and the frequencies are all determined by the boss operator because they decide what's going to make them the most money. Whereas with supported services, the combined authority decides on the route, the timetable, and the frequency <coughs> to address whatever the particular need is that we feel the people, those residents need. So commercial, typically in urban areas or buses between cities and towns, and the services that are supported are a mix of urban and rural services. So commercial, they must make a profit, otherwise they won't run. But supported, they fulfil a social need, but they are loss making. You know, they do not make us any money. They, they hopefully, sometimes they do cover their costs, but usually we have to put in more money than we get out. Yes, commercial. Sorry. Um, so commercially operated. So I buy first. So the majority of buses that are in operation in the area. They make a profit to um, to continue to, to run. Otherwise, they don't, you know they wouldn't run them because as a business you wouldn't do something that you're not going to make any money from. So we we in the combined authority we procure buy other services that we feel are necessary, but we, we don't we don't make any money. Okay. So today we're only talking about the supported, the supported ones. That's right. Yes. And you know the Yep, I've got yeah, I've got I've got some examples for you, but yeah, more than happy to, to go into to more detail, absolutely. Right, okay, so types of bus services. So commercial services, so operate as I say operated by first here, they are funded by by the, the, the bus fare that people pay to use them. Um, supported services that we procure, they are funded um, primarily 
um, through council tax, which, which comes in the form of a um, levy from the authorities of Bristol, Baines and South Gloucestershire. It's called a transport levy and that money comes to the West of England Combined Authority and with that pot of money we purchase the services that we feel are socially necessary. We do um, receive some other funding to purchase services but I, I will go on to that in a later slide. And we do um, have some other services because we have been lucky enough to secure some um, other government funding pots. But that, that again is a, di a different, different sort of service. So, are you saying that um, the council tax um, creates a pot that WECA yes. um, share out? Yeah. So, I'll, yeah, I'll go on to that now. So, this is how the supported services are funded. So, as I said, the me our main source of funding is from. Bath and North Somerset, Bristol and South Gloucestershire Councils and that comes from an annual payment to the combined authority which is called a transport levy and that is what is collected from your council tax. So the budget that we had for 2023-24 um, we had um, three million pounds which came from the three authorities so that's our, our, our pot of money. And I'll, I'll give some examples um, of the services, the types of services that we fund. I mean, obviously, this sort of money, it sounds a lot of money, doesn't it? But to put it into context, that only pays for 22 <coughs> supported bus services across the area. So it's, it's, it's quite a, a small number of services. Um, we also, um, we receive um, a government grant an annual grant from the government, which is a bus, bus service operators grant, it's, which is paid to all bus operators, so commercial and us. So it's a pot of money that we get to help recover um, fuel costs. So um, it aims to sort of benefit passengers and help operators to keep fares down and enables them to run services that might otherwise be unprofitable and that could be cancelled. So that comes directly from the government and that is um, an additional 1.1 million. As I said, that's not specifically for the combined authority. Anybody that operates a bus, a bus service gets that as long as there's some eligibility criteria, but that's what we get as well. Um, we also uh, um, receive some funding um, from um, developer contributions. This is called um, Section um, 106 payments, and it's a, it's a planning um, term, the Section 106, and that money is paid by developers to mitigate for the...